Okay, so I know it's late already, but um, that's fine. Um, I'm going to try and see if I can shorten this somehow and try and cut out some parts. But um, I know that uh, I know that Ulrike is excited about the teaching today because she is. Uh, you and I were recently talking about uh, spiritual gifts, and she has some questions. And so I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this will at least um, give you some clarity. So, um, yeah, so um, over the next few weeks, I'm going to be uh, teaching on the, on the spiritual gifts. Um, we're going to touch on things like power, um, evangelism. Um, and also, I'm, I'm going I'm to focus primarily on the, on the prophetic. And, and the reason why I've chosen these topics is that, uh, of course, we've got Brian Blunt joining us in, in March. He's coming quite soon, in a few weeks' time. And so... Um, um, in fact, uh, um, you know, I'm trying to uh, basically lay foundation. I'm trying to do a bit of spade work before before Brian comes, and um, and I hope that I will do I will do justice. And so, um, I really believe that these teachings will complement what uh, what Brian will bring to us. In fact, I just watched a movie called The Voice. Did you guys see the trailer? I think I might have um, posted the the trailer on on, on WhatsApp recently. And um, I actually I bought the movie. You can you can uh, either rent the movie or you can buy it on Vimeo. And and I bought the I bought the movie. And um, I thought what what might be a, a cool idea. I haven't really made up my mind yet. Is to maybe on the 13th. That's a Sunday before before Brian comes to maybe play the movie on on a Sunday morning. So um, I can tell you, it'll, it'll it'll be better than any sermon I can preach. I can I can tell you that. <laughs> and um, you know in that movie you see a lot of a lot of power evangelism, uh, people being being ministered ministered to on the streets. And uh, you know I me, mean, I'm I'm a big cry baby, so I I I, I cried off into the movie. But um, you know I really just felt the the Lord's touch, even just watching that movie. So um, I know something that will really raise your level of expectation, um, and it will also um, I think expose you to who to to Brian's ministry and expose you to who Brian is. So um, it's just an idea. Would you guys like to do that on the thirteenth? And I thought we could uh, we could bring some camping chairs. We can make it comfortable. Bring uh, Jacques, you can bring your blankie. Um, <laughs> bring some pillows. You can maybe do Coke and popcorn. Is, is it okay if we do Coke and popcorn at church? Is that legal? Um, you know, we can maybe do some snacks or something and uh, have a good time together. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm personally feeling, you know, a real growing level of expectation um, at this time. And I think that God is really going to rock this valley uh, when Brian's team comes. I hope that they, we, we trust and pray that they, that they will come. Um, I spoke to, to Andrew, who's on his team, uh, during the week on Zoom, and they bought their tickets. So we hope that um, all the, you know, with all the COVID regulations and all that, that rubbish, we hope that that plays along and that they can uh, definitely come. So um, the second reason why I want to teach on the spiritual gifts is that I want to once again do a, a ministry sign-up. And I think last time I did that was, was about two years ago, probably pre, pre-COVID. And, um, and what we want to do is, um, is uh, um, we want you to try and find a place to serve at River that complements your, your gift mix, right? And so we'll do the, the at the end I'm going to give you a, 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 a spiritual gifts exercise that you can do at home. And then uh, maybe next week or maybe on WhatsApp in the week, um, I'll send you a list of ministries at River. And, um, and I want you to do it prayerfully. Okay. And, you know, if you've, if, you've done the, if you've done an exercise, I guess, in the past, do it again. Right. Because you know what? It, it, it might just um, fan to flame the gifts within you. Sometimes we need that. Right? You know, our, our, um, sometimes we can, neglect, we can neglect our gifts. Right? Sometimes our, our gifts can lie dormant. Because, I mean, in fact, it, it, it's biblical. I'm, I'm going to share a scripture just now from, I think it's 1 Peter 4. We need to steward our gifts. And sometimes we think, you know what, okay, okay, God's given me gifts. I mean, I've got the um, gift of administration, or I've got the gift of mercy, or I've got the, a prophetic gifting. It's just going to grow and develop by itself. No, it's not. Right? So we've got to steward our gifts. And, uh, and so hopefully this exercise is going to fan to flame um, the gifting within you once again. And let's face it. You know, with, with COVID and this pandemic and lockdowns and online church, um, uh, it's been so easy for us to kind of take a back seat. And um, I think it's time for us to get in the front seat again and really step out in the gifting that God has given us. And by the way, God has given you gifts 
not just to, to, to serve the church, not just to serve um, the body of Christ. God has given you, given you uh, gifts to extend his kingdom. And I think that's where some of us get it wrong. We think that the, the gifts are solely for the church. No, they are for the church, but God wants to use you out there. He wants to use you on the street. He wants to use you in your workplace. And by the way, God has given every single one of you spiritual gifts. And no gift is, is more important than the other gift. Every gift is of value to God. And God has given you, um, God has given you the gifts that you need to be the most productive you can be in his kingdom. Sometimes we, we downplay our gifts, right? And we think, well, my gifts aren't that great. You know, look at that, look at that person. Oh, they preach so well. They're so gifted. Or you know what, that, that, that lady over there, she's so prophetic. She's so gifted. And we look at our, I mean, our gift of mercy or administration, whatever, and we downplay our gifts, right? No gift is more important than the other. All righty, there we go. So I want you to, to for, for one minute, I want you to turn to your neighbor. Don't get into groups. It's going to take too long. Turn to your neighbor, and I want you to, to answer this question. How would you define spiritual gifts? What are they? Turn to your neighbor. I'm giving you two minutes. Go for it. Mark, take it off. Okay, 30 seconds. And stop. Okay, all right. Let's uh, get back together. So I'm going to give you a definition up on the, up on the screen, on the slide, and we can look at that together. So... Uh, all right, a spiritual gift is simply a supernatural grace or ability that is um, given to Christians by God to help them to serve others and to fulfill their God-given calling or mission and through this to glorify God. So I'm going to take a sip of water and I want you to look at that definition for a moment, absorb it. All right, so let's unpack that. You can leave, the, leave that definition up on, the, up on the screen. Let's go into more details. What are spiritual gifts? Well, firstly, gifts are from God. Gifts are not rewards for good behavior. Gifts are received. They are not achieved. You with me? Amen. And I'm going, to, I'm going to give you scriptures. We don't have time to read all the scriptures. If you have, a, if you have a, a, a notepad and pen or your phone, take some notes. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 11. Go and read that by yourself in your quiet time. Number two, we receive our gifts when we come to faith in Christ. So when you receive Holy Spirit, you receive your gifts. And so um, unbelievers don't have the spiritual gifts. If you don't have the Holy Spirit um, dwelling within you, you, can't, you won't have spiritual gifts. Number three, God gives us gifts 
And he, of course, determines which gifts we will receive. That's what, that's what the Bible, Bible says. But I also believe that, we, that we, we can seek after specific gifts. In fact, the, 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 the Bible um, encourages us, encourages us to, to seek after the gifts. Um, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 31, eagerly desire the greater gifts. So you can seek a spiritual gift from God and try and develop in that gift. But the bottom line is God determines which gifts you get. The Holy Spirit distributes the gifts as He wills. That's, that's what the, the, the Bible says. And like I said just now, God knows exactly what gifts, you, what gifts you need to be the most productive and fruitful um, in His kingdom. Right. The fourth thing is that most people have several gifts. That's what we call a gift mix. Have you heard that term before? A gift mix. And so if I had to, somebody asked me recently, what is, what is your gift mix? And, um, and for me, I, I, I think it's pastor, prophetic, um, teacher, and administrator. So uh, you, might, uh, you might disagree with me, and that's fine. You can come and tell me. Um, your gifts are often confirmed and affirmed by other people. And, uh, but for me, that's what I, I, I feel that God, uh, that's what I feel that God has given me. And so you will have your own gift mix, whatever that might be. And so I want you to, you're going to turn to your neighbor once again for one minute and ask your neighbor, do you know what your gift mix is? And if you know what it is, tell your neighbor what those gifts are. Quickly, one minute, go. We're back to school, guys. We're back to school. <laughs> Okay, give your neighbor a turn if they haven't gone yet. 30 seconds. Okay, good. So, so how, many of you know, how many of you know what your gifts are? Your, your, gift, your gift mix. You, 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 you've got, you can say for sure, well, those, those are my gifts. All right? How many of you are unsure? Okay, how many of you just don't know? Okay, all right. So number five, the, the gifts are given in varying measures. And the scripture you can go and read at home is Romans 12, verse 3 to 8. Number six, um, we are responsible for seeking after the gifts and stewarding the gifts. So I said that just now, 1 Peter 4, verse 10. You can go and read that at home. And so the point is that you have a part to play in discovering your gifts and cultivating the gifts that God has given you. Number seven, they must flow out of love. I love 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1. It says, follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts. So when you, when you serve the poor, when you, when you prophesy over somebody, it must come from a place of love. And I must say that, you know, my, my mom is one of the most loving people on the planet. And, um, you know, God uses her in the prophetic. And I must say, when she, when she ministers to people, when she, when she prophesies over people, there's like this, this love that oozes out of her. And that's how we should operate in the gifts, from a place of love and connectedness to, to Him. Number eight, the gifts are manifestations of grace not marks of maturity. So receiving gifts doesn't depend on how long you've been a Christian. 
So you mustn't think, well, you know, if, if, if once I've been a Christian for like 20, 30 years, um, I'm going to have my gifts. Children get the gifts as well, by the way. When you receive Christ, you receive the gifts. And that's why it's important for us to make space for our kids to, to, to discover their gifts, A, and number two, to function in their gifts. So, for example, in church, we should make space for them to pray for others. We should make space for them in kids' church, right? Let's help them to discover their, their gifting. Number nine, the gifts, the gifts are tools for the job, not trophies. The Bible says that, that we, we, they, are, they are received for the common good. You can go and read 1 Corinthians 12 or 7. They are not things to be, to be proud of. We don't show off with our gifts. Well, look at me. I'm an amazing teacher. Right? I must be careful what I say. <laughs> because there's a... Uh, nah, let's just keep quiet. Spiritual gifts are not the same as natural talents. They are an expression of God's grace in our lives. However, I do believe that sometimes God can, uh, 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 that gifts can transform a natural talent into something supernatural, where it takes you beyond your natural ability. Does that make sense? Because people often have that question, are the gifts the same as my talents? No, they're not. We must, we must distinguish between the two. I do believe that your, your natural talents will often complement the gifts that God has given you. So how do we use our gifts? Number one, we are called to use our gifts in a way that glorifies God, that builds the body, that's His church, and extends His kingdom. Go and read 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Number two, we must remember the source. Where do the gifts come from? The gifts come from God. You have not produced the gifts. You have not manifested your gifts. The gifts have been, have been given to you by, by God. He is the source. And in order for us to, 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 to function well in the gifting that God has given us, we need to depend on God. Are you with me? Number three, gifts are not about self-glorification but building the body of Christ. And I want to read a scripture to you. It's going to go up on the screen. It says, um, Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, Because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body. It will not for that reason cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged, listen here, the parts in the body, every one of them, just as you wanted them to be. That's a lovely verse. And so like I said, just now, God has given you um, your specific gifts or particular gifts because he knows that those are the gifts that you need to have to be productive in his kingdom verse 19 if they were all one part where would the body be in other words every believer and every gift has a part to play amen verse 20 as it is there are many parts but one body so the gifts function together it's like a big machine right you take out that, 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 uh, that, that bolt or whatever, that machine's not going to function. We function together as a body. Isn't that so amazing? You need the gifts that I carry, and I need the gifts that you carry. We build up each other. Come on. You know, I, I, lo I, love, on I, lo I love online church. I think that online church is great. But you can only go so far with online church. I, I believe it. We need to gather and come together to be, to be built up, to benefit from each other's gifting. And that can never be achieved online. <laughs> as great as online church is. You with me? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 22, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. Some of you are thinking, my gifts are poofder. No, your gifts are indispensable. 
I'm picking on the gift of, of administration here. You know, if we don't have admin people, nothing's going to get done. You know, that, that, that church social we want on the 6th, it ain't going to happen without admin people. <laughs> you with me? Every gift is, is valuable and has a part to play. And by the way, if you, if you, if you study the book of Corinthians, the Corinthians were, were impressed with the so-called um, ecstatic gifts. You know, those, uh, those flamboyant gifts, like, uh, like tongues and, 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 and prophecy. And there are some in the body of Christ today who fall into the same trap. And we make the mistake of elevating some gifts above the other. For example, like I said, we, we look at that person that, that preaches well and we think, wow, they're so gifted. But let me tell you that the gift of administration is just as important as the gift of preaching. The gift of helps is just as important as the gift of prophecy. The gift of mercy is just as important as the gift of faith. So your gifts matter. So don't downplay your gifts and don't elevate your gifts. We are one body, eh? Let's move on. I'm going to keep this quite short. So how do we discover our gifts? I think, was it uh, Ulrike, did you ask me that? <laughs> Don't want to embarrass you. How do we discover our gifts? And I want to give you four points very quickly. Number one is you want to look back. Look back at your past. Where have you seen fruitfulness in your ministry, in things you've done for God? What have you enjoyed doing as a Christian? What has given you life? What energizes you? So, for example, when you, um, uh, I don't know, if you went out on the street and prayed for people and evangelized, if that made you come alive, then maybe you've got the, um, the gift of evangelism, right? Or if you really love organizing events, administrating, maybe that's your gift. What makes you come alive? Hey? Number two, look in. Do some self-introspection. What do you feel passionate about? Like I say, what excites you? If you could do one thing for God, what would that thing be? Hey? What would that thing be? Is it kids' ministry? Is it youth ministry? Is it mission? Is it serving the poor? What is that one thing? Number three, look out. What do other people say are your gifts? I believe that um, gifts are often um, recognized and confirmed by other people. So let's say, for example, um, um, you teach kids' church one day, and uh, Lisa says to you, Susie, you know what? You're a good teacher. What has she done? She has recognized a gift in Susie. You, you get the point. I would say that, um, that, that when, we function in those, when we function in our gift, it, feel, it doesn't feel like work. It feels it's fun. It feels effortless. You know, I've seen it in the past. Like when I was, when I, when I was a, a kids and youth pastor, and sometimes we can get desperate to try and find teachers, right? And I remember I would, I would make the appeal, and, and I remember I tried to get all the parents involved in doing kids' church at one stage, and, and I could see some of the parents just didn't want to do it. <laughs> and they did it because I said, listen, all of your parents better serve, okay, because we need teachers. But I could see that some of them just didn't enjoy it. It wasn't their gifting. They had children in kids' church, but they weren't passionate about kids' church. That's the worst thing to stick somebody in a ministry where they hate doing it, right? Number four, look around. As you look at the uh, serving opportunities here at River, we are the, the gaps. We are the opportunities. Where, where can you serve? What interests you? What, what excites you? And you, you, may not, you may not feel, you may not be skilled in that area. You may not be qualified. But if you're excited about it, if you're passionate about it, 
then I'd say explore it. Maybe, it's, it's, maybe God has given you that gift, but it needs to be cultivated and matured over time. All righty. And by the way, um, the, the ministry that you want to serve in may not exist, right? So we started a new ministry this uh, quite recently that Anne's leading, and that's Mercy Ministry, right? So when we give you the list of ministries at River, there might, be, there might, not be, there might be somebody something that's not on there that you're passionate about. Hey, it's an opportunity to start something new. I said at the beginning of this year, let's be innovative. We don't, always have to do, we don't always have to do the same thing the same way, week after week, month after month, year after year. God is an incredibly creative God. And God, God gives us passion. He gives us dreams. Um, I feel like God is going to um, um, be birthing dreams in your heart. It's always fun to listen to the Holy Spirit when you preach. Some of you are saying, I want to do this thing, but I don't quite know how I'm going to do it. I don't really have the resource. I don't really have the people to do it. Um, listen, when, when, when Joseph, Joseph received his dream when he was 17, um, and, um, and, and he certainly wasn't qualified. And it took some time for that dream to play out. And I feel the Lord wants to say to you that begin with a dream. Don't worry about the practicalities and, and the logistics. Begin with a dream. And you just take that first step. Come on, am I speaking to somebody? Just take the first step. All right, it's uh, next next uh, slide. We're going to wrap up quite soon. So, um, um, in the New Testament, we find we find a, a list of gifts, and there is repetition, there's overlap, and um, I want to just show you those quickly. We're not going to go through every single one, but you see, there's a list in one Corinthians 12, it's 8 to 11, and then from verse 28 to 31, you can go to our next slide. Then Romans 12 and Ephesians 4. Verse 11 to 13. There's, um, the list in Ephesians 4, we, we call that the, 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 um, the office gifts or the, the equipping gifts, right? Because God has given the, the apostles and prophets, um, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip the church. Those are equipping gifts. And by the way, teachers should be producing teachers, and prophets should be producing prophets. You, you with me? Let's move on. So, um, so what we're going to do now is in a moment, before you leave, I'm going to give you um, a spiritual gifts test. And you better take it and do it. Because I printed these at like 10 o'clock last night. <laughs> and I printed enough copies. So please, I really want to encourage you to go home and do it, okay? There should be enough copies for everyone in this room. I think I have about 50 copies. And uh, it looks like this. So on the, on the one side, you've got, it says, um, gift, and it lists the gifts on uh, my right-hand side. And you've got the, the main emphasis of the gift. And then you have a description. And then you've got uh, scripture. And then you've got a section that says you and other. So basically what, you, what you're going to do when you do the exercise is you're going to start with number one and you, you're going to read the, the gift. So let's, uh, uh, for example, administration. Let's do one together. The main emphasis is to organize. Description. The person with this gift will be able to organize information, plans, projects to work efficiently in the body of Christ for a particular task. The scripture is 1 Corinthians 12 verse 28. And so you've got administration, uh, um, apostle, discerning spirits, evangelist, exhortation, faith, giving, healing, helps, 
interpretation of tongues, knowledge, mercy, miracles, uh, pastor, prophecy, leadership, teaching, tongues, and wisdom. And um, I think all the gifts are on there. If, if not, you can just add them to your piece of paper. And uh, you're going to go through each one. And you're going to, to rate. So you're going to start with number administration. And you're going to give it a rating. So A would be, that's definitely my gift. B would be, uh, that's, that's probably my gift. C is I'm unsure. Or D, that's definitely not my gift. So you're going to, you're going to do the exercise. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go and find somebody else to rate you. They're going to put in their score. Okay. So you can go through this yourself. It's self-explanatory, and it's a great way for you to discover your gifts. I just want to say that, um, and maybe just take notes, that um, I, I don't quite like the definition of the, the word of knowledge and, and, the, and the prophetic. And I like um, Judy Scott's um, definition, which I want to give to you quickly. Uh, Judy Scott is a, um, a lady that wrote a, a manual on the prophetic. She's from the Western Cape. She says that um, word of knowledge is the ability to know something about a person or situation that has been re revealed supernaturally by God. It can be in the present or in the past. If it's in the future, it is prophecy. And she gives the example of um, Jesus when he um, encounters the Samaritan woman, remember? And he says, you, you've had five husbands. That's a word of knowledge. And I like, I like her definition of, of that gift. So it differs slightly to what you're going to read on your page. Um, and then uh, um, for the prophetic, they say on your, on your gift sheet that the main emphasis is to correct, and I would disagree with that. Now, obviously, this is not my gift test, and, uh, uh, and the person that wrote this uh, comes from a certain theological disposition. Um, I, I, would, uh, I would disagree. I would say the, the main emphasis of the prophetic is to strengthen and build and comfort um, uh, the um, other believers. So that's my little two cents there. And I prefer my Judy Scott's definition. She says, Prophecy is a supernatural enabling by the Spirit of God to hear His voice, then deliver the message of what God is saying, which I think is a very uncomplicated, simple definition. Amen. You're with me? All right. Any questions? Did it help you in any way? Did it give you any clarity? So Ulrika, are you going to do it? And you're going to come back and you're going to tell us what your gifts are? Hey? Because, yes. Can we do that now quickly? Okay, so let's hand it out. We also need to hand out the survey form before you go. I know it's been a bit of a long service. Um, if your bum's sore, um, do a bum stretch or something. I don't know. Um, Helen, you want to help us? Let's get Jacques maybe come and help us here. Hand these out. You're not going to do these now, by the way. You must do them, do them at home, please. You can uh, give to these guys here. If you have any questions in the week, please feel free to contact me. Anything that you're unsure of. All right. So, so like I say, we're going to give you that. Um, go home and do that in the week. And then uh, maybe next week, Sunday, I'll print out copies of the ministries at River. And um, you can do that. And then at the, at the bottom of that page, I'm going to leave a blank space open in case there's a ministry that you want to start. Hey, come on. Sure. I also just want to say that if there's anybody that um, um, maybe wants to be trained in leading a small group, that's another opportunity, hey? Okay.